It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm excited to welcome back to the show my guest, John Smybert. John's joining us all the way from Sydney, Australia today, co-founder, CEO of Strategic Selling Group. John, welcome back to Accelerate. Thank you, Andy. It's delightful to be back, and uh, welcome to all your uh, listeners. Um, look forward to talking to all of you again. Well, good. Well, you you have a large following on our show, so... Um, I'm sure people are excited to have you back. So maybe for those who didn't hear you the first time, is take a minute, introduce yourself, and you know a little bit of how you got started in sales. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm I'm uh, a, a, an aging guy that's been retired three or four times and still having fun. Um, I uh, my whole career has been uh, in the IT industry around sales, sales management, general management, uh, and for the last. 14 years or so, I've uh, started a number of businesses and, and really loved uh, working, essentially looking at how I can give back a little by enhancing the, the professionalism in the sales world. Okay. Well, and one of the things we want to talk about today is, is right along that, that line, which is the importance of developing a personal brand in sales. Personal branding. It's a topic a lot of people have uh, been talking about for a long, long time. But I tell you, it's, 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 you, you look at the personal brands of uh, the average salesperson out there and they haven't got the message yet. <laughs> well, why do you think that is? I, I think it's a number of reasons, actually, Andy. I'd, I'd really say one, one reason is that the, the companies they work for have not encouraged it. And I think that's a very sad indictment on uh, on management executives. Well, uh, because, not, you say uh, not encouraged or actively discouraged? Well, in many cases, actively discouraged uh, and to their own detriment. It's uh, executives around the world need to understand that it's by empowering their people and putting trust in their people and sure, giving them guidelines and training and assistance and coaching, but empowering them to go out and build their personal brand in alignment with their own organization. It's, it's, it's just, it just should be the natural thing to do. We've always empowered salespeople to go out and talk to our customers without us being there monitoring them. What's the difference in, in, in actually building their personal brand and getting out there on social media or whatever else and, and, and actually being seen as a strong individual with uh, a unique promise of value that they are offering out there to their target audience. So really, I mean, is that this lack of trust that, that that's what's driving executives to discourage salespeople, sales professionals from going out and, and building this personal brand is lack of control over the message? Is that what the concern is? A lot of it's to do with fear of, of the world of Social now. When I'm talking personal brand, you know, you're talking about a physical personal brand that, that we all have. But we're also talking this day and age that we're out there on on in the digital world. We're in the social media world, uh, and we all hear the horror stories about the mistakes people make and the damage they do to themselves and their companies by saying the wrong thing and and so on. Uh, and, and that's not going to change because you've you hold back. Your people, you, know, you don't trust them to actually say something out on social uh, that might damage your company. You, you, you're not going to change that fact. People are out on social anyway. That they on social, they say who they work for, uh, and they'll talk about that. So you need really to understand that you've got to help them with that, not try and stop them. Uh, and yes, I think it comes down to trust. It comes down to uh, organisations wanting to. Uh, yeah, the, the the issue of loyalty comes in here. If we if we uh, help people with a personal brand, they'll get very strong out there. They'll go and leave us. Well, they're going to leave you if that's the attitude. They're going to leave you anyway, right? As they should. So, so really, then the the key sort of components we're looking at for a personal brand in sales is certainly it's it has to attract, influence, and engage. 
I think there's three very good words there, Andy. Um, uh, and I think the more important thing is to talk about how you, how you do that in a personal brand. Okay, um, so let's jump into how do we how do we use it to attract, to influence, and engage? Uh, I um, there's, there's a few people out there. I, I really do a great job. One is William Aruda. I'm not sure whether you would know know of William. No, uh, I don't. He, he's a personal branding expert based in New York. Uh, so anybody I recommend to anybody jump on, have a look at some of his videos and and so on. A uh, company called Reach. Okay. Uh, he talks about a personal brand being your unique promise of value to your target audience. Um, and, and, and we need to break down what that means, uh, you know, the word unique. Uh, we're all unique. And if we don't think we're unique and our company doesn't think we're unique, then we haven't got a lot to offer. Uh, and we've got to really sit down and think about what is unique about us and what's our unique promise of value to the people we're talking with? And that includes our peers, our our uh, the, the, uh, the, our customers, um, our partners, and so on. We've all got a unique promise of value to each one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the first thing that we all need to do is, is understand who we are and what's unique about us and what our unique promise of value is. So... When you're an individual, though, talking about that unique promise of value, you're not really talking about your company's value. You're talking about the value you yourself are going to provide Abs- to somebody that engages with you. Absolutely, Andy. You're spot on. And that's the problem. You know, the company tries to get their, their people going out there talking about uh, you know, the, the company, the products, and, and so on. And, and I just can't get over the fact that a lot of companies still do that. And the, and, the, and the salesperson needs to be out there talking to the customer about the customer's business. And in doing so, the, the salesperson needs to be a domain expert or a domain specialist in the area that the customer's thinking about, not in their product and their company, the, the, um, the, the company and product that the salesperson works for, but for the, the domain in which the company's thinking. Uh, and therefore, as a personal brand, your unique promise of value has to be relative to that. Which really speaks to an issue that's, that's hard for many sales professionals because, you know, in my mind, we sort of divide into two, two groups. One is generalists and one is specialists, you know, people yep. that have some specialized knowledge. And then those people that say, well, I can sell anything. And I think the generalists are an endangered species. I think uh, I think we talked about that before, haven't we, Andy? Yes. I've heard you that to <laughs> lots of other people. Yes, if, if, if you're not adding value to the customer, if you're not bringing some unique insights to the table and helping them understand how that will help them improve their business, then you have no value. It's the product you've got and the company you work for is no value. It's what you can do to help the customer. I think there's uh, and, and 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 you need to be able to portray that and give trust to the company, to the customer that you're able to do that and and your personal brand starts that process. Yeah, I still think there's there's people hanging on to this idea that especially in a complex B2B sales that somehow the the sales rep, the account manager, whatever you want to call them, account executive is like the traffic cop, right? Directing resources to and from, coordinating, maybe the logistics manager, if you will, uh, you know, bringing the resources to bear at the right time for the prospect. And you, know, you can't just be on the outside looking in and being in that role. You need to have learned something from <laughs> the, the, having worked with those experts and pick some of that up and synthesize that into what you're able to help the prospect with. And and from the customer's perspective, increasingly, if you're just that traffic cup, they're going to bypass you because there's no value there. Exactly. So exactly. From, so from your personal brand, you know these are the people that you know their LinkedIn profile is basically a resume. You know, there's nothing they've shared, nothing original that they've put out there. Uh, same thing with their their social, their Twitter feed, and so on. It's it's. Nothing unique, as you said. There's no unique promise of value there. It's interesting. I, uh, I did a little bit of research um, just a couple of weeks ago uh, where we uh, searched through a few hundred 
sales profiles on LinkedIn. Uh, fairly random search within a geographic area. Uh, and it was amazing. We, you know, we had a little uh, a, a test we, uh, we applied to each one of the profiles. And with this test, we were looking for uh, individuals, uh, the sales individuals that projected a very good profile, a very good uh, unique promise of value through their, through their um, profile. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was less than 5% did that. 95% of the salespeople on that research, and I would suggest it's probably common worldwide, uh, yes, it was either read as a CV or even if it was a little bit customer-focused, it, it really didn't portray any unique promise of value coming from that person. Why would I want to talk with that person it would be the question the customer's asking. Yeah, and I, I saw a question that that, and perhaps this may seem unfair to especially people that are newer to the sales profession and so on. But and this wasn't an issue that you and I contended with in the same respect when, when we got started, is that you, you need to know what you stand for, right? Because, because what you stand for is something that's, you know, you are much more visible. That's just one of the things, right, that comes along with, with our social media and social selling and so on. You are visible in a way you never were before. So who are you? What do you stand for? I mean, that's what that... Uh, that's what that unique you, promise of value is, is related to. Is, you know, what? Yeah. You, you, and you raise a very good point there. Um, when I'm coaching people through personal branding, um, even before we get to unique promise of value, uh, uh, we spend a lot of time making sure that individual uh, really searches for their authentic self. Uh, and one of the issues in salespeople, and it's not just salespeople, it's, it's all sorts of people, it's salespeople in particular. They, they, for years, have been trying to be somebody they're not. That they, they think they need to be somebody that, that is different to the, who they believe they really are. Uh, and in my view, the most refreshing salesperson that, that the customer loves to meet with is the person that's open, honest, and authentic. Uh, and, and so the very foundation of a personal brand needs to be uh, be authentic, be genuine uh, and open. Uh, and so that's vital for people to come to first. And, and of course, you read a lot of uh, LinkedIn profiles and you read through two or three paragraphs of the summary or you know, some of the job roles, et cetera, and you always you can read, see right through people where they're trying to pretend they're somebody who they're not. Yeah, and I think part of that is encouraged by sort of the ongoing use by many sales organizations of sort of these stereotypical sort of heroic qualities that they're looking for in their sales reps. So I think people feel like that's what the customers want. Therefore, they have to sort of portray themselves that way. I am aggressive. I'm a hunter. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm the extrovert. I'm the, which are really not terms that customers care about. Customers hate it. Absolutely hate it. Customers want to deal with a real person who's likely to bring a little value to the table to help them think through some of the issues they've got and work out how they can move on in a productive and creative way. Well, I think you really you nailed that when you said think through together, right? I mean, it's that collaborative part of it. You know, it's, exactly. it's the, uh, the root of the word collaborative is co-labor, right? Co-create. We're going to work together. To do something, we're going to think through. Those are the values. So, if you can have, represent those as part of your unique promise of value in your social profiles, in your personal brand, then that that really resonates. It really does. Uh, now, of course, I, I talk about you, you need to build domain expertise, and you need to project that in your personal brand. So, you're right. When when a young salesperson started. Um, you know, they might be sitting back saying, well, what unique domain expertise have I got? Well, the reality is you better get it. You better get it fast and your company better get it, help you get it. And if the company doesn't help you get it, you better find uh, other avenues to get that sort of expertise. I, I, um, I use a case study. I had a young lady that uh, I coached uh, who did an amazing job. She'd come out of a role in, in a bank where she was in in um, in communications inside the bank, and she was hired 
and in that communication, she was communicating things around security issues and so on and so forth. And she got to like security a little bit. Uh, and she went and got a sales job selling security solutions. Uh, and, of course, started from ground zero. Uh, and at the time she was hired, an experienced salesperson was hired. Uh, and he knew how to sell but didn't know not, a lot about security. And, and in three years, this young lady went from zero to hero. Just mm -hmm. amazing. She, and, and, and the company helped her, well, helped her to some extent, but, but most of it was herself. I'm going to be, become a domain expertise in security and banking. And she went out of her way to follow all the thought leaders to really get to know it. She started writing articles. She, she started, uh, went to all the seminars on, on security and banking and so on and so forth. And she, in three years, became an expert. She became a domain expert uh, to the point where she, had, she eventually got awarded at one of the banking conferences with uh, services to the banks. And that happened in three years. Everybody can do it with, with the right sort of attitude and right sort of approach. Right. And I think the key thing for people listening to the show as we talk about personal brand acquiring domain expertise is that you can't rely on your employer to provide that for you. I mean, it's as much as we'd like to. It's just not, you just can't go into this world assuming that you're going to learn everything from a classroom training or from a workbook or a handbook that somebody gives you. I mean, I'm sure that probably the most significant part of, of this woman's training that she learning experience i'll say that she went through was going out and talking to customers oh big part of that big part of that and then and then learning all uh, a whole host of insightful knowledge that uh, she was able then to take to other customers without giving you know customer specific information away but uh, yeah she that was part of her building her domain expertise absolutely yeah so you think about that i mean if if you're new on the job or relatively or new to a company maybe you're not new in sales but new to a company and you're saying, okay, how do I start building my personal brand? How do I start acquiring this domain expertise, which is part of that brand, both with the customers internally and inside the company? It's, it's on you. It's on you. You've got, you're going to have to go do that. You're going to have to find a way. You know, in my case, you know, I like to go talk to customers. You know, to me, that's, that's the way I learn. So I want to talk to customers. Why did they buy or talk to prospects? Why didn't they buy? You know, what, what, you know, what are our strengths? What are the real values we're bringing? As you said, you know, take those tidbits, maybe combine it with something another customer told you, and you start forming a, a bigger picture of, okay, here are the insights about how we provide value to these set of customers. And as I said, no one's going to hand that to you. Absolutely. Yeah. I and mean, that, that's from a personal point of view. And, and each, each individual salespeople need, person needs to do that. And as you said, if you don't, you become a generalist, and a generalist are not going to survive. And, and, as uh, as we've read in a number of articles recently, it's probably going to be, you know, twenty percent of the sales force uh, disappear in the next four years. Um, well, well, I think even if even if we don't lose twenty percent of the sales force, what we are going to see though is this the stratification, where those that have the domain expertise, those that incorporate that into their personal brand, they're going to be the ones that are sought after. So, who's going to be getting the better jobs, the bigger opportunities, the new opportunities at the hot new companies? Or, you know, more responsibility dealing with critical accounts within an existing company, whatever you, you aspire to that's, that's sort of the upside, yeah, the domain experts are going to get those opportunities first. Exactly. Look, uh, even in the transactional type selling, uh, if people, if salespeople focus on building domain expertise, I had a classic recently, I was working with, <laughs> I call them sandpaper, but an abrasive company, I was selling abrasives. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, and they were looking at, you know, how can we get more traction in the market uh, and so on. So we looked at their sales process, we looked at a whole lot of things, and we went and talked to their salespeople, and they started talking about the fact that they all need to think about how they're going to create value for their customers. They need to become domain expertise, experts. Uh, and one young lady just took this on dramatically, and uh, she had case study after case study. For example, she was, you know, Australia's got, surfers up and down the coast mm -hmm. so there's lots of surfboard manufacturers so she'd go to all these surfboard manufacturers and look at how they were getting that the right sort of surface on the on the on the surfboard and she became an expert on getting you know the right sort of surfaces for the right sort of application on on timber on wood uh, or or fiberglass or whatever it was 
Uh, and and all the discussions she was having with her customers had nothing to do with abrasives. It all had to do with how the customer could achieve the outcome they wanted. And and here you're selling sandpaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the discussion was never around sound, sandpaper, if you get what I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's the benefit. And the thing is, that then really becomes readily evident to your customers when you're talking to them from the, the first minute, practically, that you know what you're talking about. Because you're going to leave. And, you're going to leave. And you're and gonna you value. You, you, the, the customer wants to talk to you. Yeah. I, 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 I say to, to a lot of people, you know, how would it be if you called up a potential customer you'd never met and said, you know, hello, I'm John. John Smyber, but I, uh, you know, I'd like to have a chat. And, and the answer was, "Good, hey, John, great to hear from you." <laughs> <laughs> if you have a personal brand in a target audience, target market, and you're projecting that brand out there, and you're a domain expert, uh, expert, and you bring, you're going to get that a lot. Right? That's what personal branding is all about. Yeah, I mean, you go to the conferences, go to your local networking meetings, do do what it takes to put that out there. You know, interesting. There's some research that was done. And I forget where I'd seen this, but that found that uh, actually that sort of Generation X or people 40 to 45 and older in the workforce are actually much more adept at developing the personal brands online than the millennials. I think, uh, yeah, I'd hate to brand different uh, age groups because... Um, I find some really some young people doing great work. I mean, the case study I talked about before, uh, this young lady by the name of Sue, she was 20, 25, I think, when she started in that sales role I'm talking about. Well, I think part, uh, of, the, part of the research was driven by the fact that, that you know, with a little maturity, you have a greater awareness of the importance of that, perhaps. And maybe you've spent more time cultivating your network. And, yeah, and the advantage that Sue had is he had great... Uh, she had access to to mentorship, and, and and a lot of young salespeople don't have that. They they don't get the sort of support they need in in a lot of cases. They're given a given a bit of product training and uh, and a PowerPoint presentation and said, "Go out, go sell." Well, we also you know we talk in sales and and marketing about developing a customer persona, who it is you're selling to. You know, who are they? You know, be very you know, detail-oriented and, and who that target is, is it seems to me that personal branding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is is you have to develop a sense of what your own persona is going to be. You know, who who are you? We talked about being your authentic self, but how do you express that? Who do you, who do you want to be? Right? I mean, it's this type, it's sort of an instance where you start with the end in mind. Yeah, and as long as you start with who you are right now and make sure you authentically understand who the, who you who your authentic self is, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't hurt then to say, right, now I do want to change. Uh, there's a there's a brilliant um, uh, TED talk by Amy Cuddy. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember the title of it now, but she talks about uh, a whole host of things around, and a brilliant talk if, if people want to go and have a look at it, where you can change. Uh, you, well, you don't have a belief in yourself, but you you, you pretend. You, you, she says, uh, you know, "Don't fake it until you make it. Fake it until you are." Right. Uh, some words to that effect. Um, and yes, but but you need to have a grounding in an understanding of who you really are before you then start looking at who you want to be and what the gap is from who you are and who you want to be and how you're going to fill that gap. Yeah, I mean, that, and that makes sense. I mean that makes sense, but I think that that I think that what she describes that that path, and I've not seen her her talk. I've read one of her books. Is, is that you know this is this is sort of a natural progression. I think for for people that are sort of ambitious and aspirational, is that yeah you are sort of you are sort of faking it a little bit until you are. I mean that's how we grow and mature in a profession. Yeah. Absolutely, Andy. Hey, let, let's take the conversation. We've been talking about the individual, like person, personal branding for the individual and how the individual needs to take charge of that. One of the things that really worries me a little bit, we started on this topic, was, was how corporations and businesses think about their people and how they help their people develop. 
Uh, and the, the, the key message I want to get to some of the leaders out there is is that the personal branding, in my mind, is something that every organisation should help their people with. Uh, the issue is most people have, a, or everybody's got a personal brand. I mean, the, the day after you're born, we all have some level of personal brand and it grows and develops it through our, our life. Uh, the issue is that brand is more often developed without design, uh, and um, we need to, we need to put some thinking and strategy around that and help help uh, develop and into a direction that makes sense as we we're just discussing. Corporations should be helping their people to do that. How? Uh, it's by by helping uh, by making sure there's coaching in place for personal branding, making sure there's good guidelines in place. Uh, providing resources to help their people. Uh, for example, part of branding in this day and age is, is publishing. Every single salesperson in my mind should be out there publishing in one form or another. Right. Now, you might only publish three articles on LinkedIn and leave them sitting there for a while and maybe publish one, one a year. But, but when somebody looks at your profile, they should see that you've written a couple of articles, click on one of those articles, whatever title interests them, and say, aha, this person has something of interest to say. So how does the company... Really, really important. So how does the company help with that? Is the company... Well, the company can help with that. Yeah, most, most salespeople aren't writers. Right. Uh, uh, and a probably, but most, a lot of them are very good in in front of a camera, uh, so they can do a bit of video or they can do an audio, like we're talking about. Lots of lots of ways in which they can put content up there. If they're building domain expertise and have some insight into customer domains, insight that would be of value to those customers, they need to write it down or talk it into a camera or whatever. It's easy to do. Maybe the company now needs to have an individual that will help, you know, a good editor or or a good writer that will take a little bit of content, massage it, and give it back in a form that is is publishable. But as long as it's the individual's content, not content forced on the individual by the company. Mm -hmm. So the company can help them do that. The company can help them. Yeah, just take them through a process, uh, of, you know, coaching them and understanding, helping this individual understand who they are, what the, who their authentic self is, uh, understand what their unique promise of value is, work out how you're going to project that through your profile on LinkedIn and wherever else you're going to do it, uh, and then how you're going to um, put out that unique promise of value in terms of content or whatever. Well, I mean, I know all some of that companies can help with. Well, I know. I've heard of companies that have actually large companies, large enterprises, actually, you know, mandate their like their account managers have to blog. Yeah, you know they they have they have to create content. But you say I've heard of it. There's so few, and yet all companies should be doing that. They should be empowering their people to do that. The the, the power. I mean, in marketing these days, they're all learning that the advertising is no longer much value. The one to many doesn't work very effectively. People don't trust it. Um, the the one to one type marketing is is much better. But being a, having every organisation has what, tens, hundreds, thousands of customer facing people, and if every one of those people had a strong personal brand with a unique promise of value that was well aligned to the company, what power is that in the marketplace? Absolutely incredible. So the companies need to embrace personal branding. So first step then for a company to embrace it, let's say you've got a, you know, a, a mid-sized enterprise, got a few hundred employees, maybe they've got 25, 30, 40 sales professionals. How do they start? I, I think they probably uh, or definitely need to employ help with experts out there. I mentioned uh, William Aruda. Um, William and his organisation could do enormous value to, to large organisations and do. William does a lot of work with consultants and um, uh, and uh, coaches and that sort of stuff, helping them build their own brand. Um, but, he, but he could go out and help. Now, people like you and I, I'm sure, but certainly something that I do a lot is, is help companies think through their personal branding strategy and coach some of their internal people, train the trainer type things on, and run workshops with with salespeople and and 
It's not just salespeople. It's any customer-facing people. Um, and customer facing can be telephone as well, where you, the individual needs to build their personal brand. 75% or more of views on LinkedIn are by customers these days before or after they've met with an individual. Interesting. So what, does that, what does that tell you? Well, we all need to project value and exactly. what our unique promise of value is aligned with the company. The other thing company needs to do is put out very good guidelines so uh, you know, people don't damage their personal brand or the company brand in, in what they're doing. Well, and I think the other thing that's that's implicit in everything we said and but is needs to be made explicit is that this is not a one-time event. You know, once you've started on this path, then it has to be maintained, has to be kept current, has to be you know updated. You know, it's not enough to say, okay, gosh, I've made this really great LinkedIn profile and I've put one article out there and voila, I'm done. No, that's right. And, and, it's, and it's not a training program either. That's the other thing I need to say. You don't bring all your salespeople into a two-day training program to help them plan and develop their personal brand. Um, it does need to be a coaching, mentoring, ongoing development program. You're absolutely right, Andy. Yeah, because it's like anything. It's, is you're going to test it. You're going to see what works. You might do, you know, what level of engagement you're getting based on some of the content you publish. And yeah, you know, if you get a bunch, then get more like that. Especially if it's working for you in terms of engagement with potential prospects. Exactly. And the other thing is, you you do need to, to give salespeople assistance. Um, there are a lot of mundane, and this this applies to social selling either. Personal branding and social selling go hand in hand. Um, the whole world of working social and, and looking at trigger events and, and all of that sort of thing. This is where a switched on marketing organization that is well aligned to a sales organization can help enormously and bring resource to the table to help salespeople you know, build their following, uh, get the sort of content out that we we're talking about. Uh, re- make sure that we're, that uh, any activity their target audience has on social and or any discussion that occurs, um, the salesperson knows about or somebody's you know, pointing out that, that the customer has just asked a question uh, on, on, a, on an article or, or made a comment on an article. All that needs to be captured and managed very careful, carefully. And, and we can't overburden salespeople with handling lots of mundane sort of activity really important activity but mundane activity that, that is generated out of both personal branding and social selling. So the answer is doing what on that? The mundane activity? Assistance, well, virtual assistance? Well, virtual assistance that? Is, a, is a classic. Uh, here in Australia, um, we have the, um, uh, the advantage of being in the same time zone as the Philippines, and the Philippines have some brilliant schools on virtual assistance. So, I use I use virtual assistants out of the Philippines to do a lot of the the, the repetitive type activity around personal branding and social selling. Uh, so companies need to think about how they they resource that sort of activity uh, to help salespeople because it, it, social selling and personal branding take a lot of time. And when you evaluate that time, 80% of the time is uh, very mundane tasks that you can delegate out, right, right up the, the procedures, the processes, delegate out and have other people do to help the salespeople. So give us just a quick example here as we come toward the end of the show of how you use those resources in the Philippines to help you with that. Um, I use them uh, in, particularly in uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I will have uh, people monitoring uh, all the comments, all the discussions. I, I run a uh, LinkedIn group, uh, mm-hmm. a strategic selling group. So I'll have uh, people monitoring that, giving me any feedback as to, hey, something's just happened here, you probably should go online. With Within reason, I can even get people to say, hey, I'll, you know, if somebody uh, comes online and follows me on LinkedIn and, and it fits this criteria, here's an invitation. I want to actually connect with that sort of person. I'll give them license to sell, send an invitation uh, 
to that person. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, follow the follower, mm -hmm. a host of other activities to grow your following. Uh, you can outsource um, to a very good virtual assistant. Now, these virtual assistants, you need to get to know very well. They need to get to know you because they're acting on your behalf. It's the same as a, having a, a secretary in the old days or a personal assistant in the old days sitting beside you. They're, they're not sitting in another country, but it's still, they, they're working extremely closely with you. They're, they're acting on your behalf. So you, you need to trust them uh, and they need to trust you and you need to make sure the right messages are going out to your customers. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, John, we sort of reached the end of the show. Uh, thanks for joining me again. It's been an absolute pleasure again, Andy. And uh, all, I think, bottom line, I look at your personal brand, Andy. You are doing a wonderful job out there, creating a lot of value, and, and you do have a unique promise of value. You drive out there for your, your listeners, your customers, and so on. So, well done. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, John, tell folks how they can connect with you and find out more about what you're doing. They can connect, uh, first of all, go to uh, strategicsellinggroup.com or go to my, um, my LinkedIn profile. I think there's only one John Smybert on LinkedIn. So, uh, if you just search on John Smybert, that's S-M-I-B-E-R-T, uh, you'll get me on LinkedIn from there. You can go and find websites and Twitter uh, whatever else. Plus, of course, uh, most of the articles I publish on the strategicsellinggroup.com, I also publish on LinkedIn, so you'll see a lot of my content there as well. Absolutely. Well, good stuff. Well, John, again, thanks for being on the show. It's an absolute pleasure, Andy, and I hope we brought some value to the listeners. I think you did. And speaking of which, thank you very much, listeners, for joining us today. And remember, make it a part of your daily routine every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success and Easy way to do that is to take a minute and subscribe to this podcast, Accelerate, because that way you won't miss any of my conversations with top business experts like my guest today, John Smybert, who shared his expertise about how to accelerate the growth of your business. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guest, visit my website at andypaul.com.